Well, it might have been a better week for uranium stocks, but it's been a dreadful year. The Fukushima meltdown in Japan back in March started a global chain reaction of developed nations scaling back their nuclear power generating aspirations. Australia's largest producer, ERA, has seen its share price slide about 80%, and the next biggest, Paladin, has been hit almost as hard. So does the PM's personal crusade to overturn the ALP's ban on exporting uranium to India usher in a new era for the sector? Neil Woolrich reports. Selling uranium to India will be good for the Australian economy and good for Australian jobs. Energy is one of the key areas of our bilateral cooperation. We welcome uh, this very important initiative. We are totally opposed to this idea of selling uranium to India because it undermines international law. Plenty of heat and some fury to boot. This week, Julia Gillard announced plans to allow uranium exports to India. If approved by the ALP National Conference, it would overturn a ban that Kevin Rudd imposed in 2008. I believe the time has come for the Labor Party to change this position. Uranium contributes over $750 million to the Australian economy, creating over 4,200 jobs. Julia Gillard's announcement sparked a flurry of activity in uranium stocks, with Peninsula Energy jumping 20% on Tuesday and a host of others posting sizeable gains. The reaction in the market comes about, I think, more because People have totally overlooked the sector. Ever since Fukushima, people have put it in the, in the backwaters. A lot of stocks have just been totally ignored and suddenly people looked at it and thought, well, there's still good economics in the sector, there's still good growth, there's still a good future. From an overseas perspective, uh, it does uh, create a, a much more favourable political view. Uh, internationally, uh, our international investors especially get quite confused by the Australian uranium politics and uh, we're constantly explaining the, the arrangement. Um, but they certainly see this uh, as uh, some smoothing of that political uh, arrangement. Greg Hall is Managing Director of Toro Energy, a uranium startup with permits to explore in South Australia, Western Australia and Africa. He says Julia Gillard's proposal won't have a great impact on the global market, but might help attract uranium investors into Australia. You're well aware that uh, China, Japan, uh, Korea and other enterprises have been investing in uh, enterprises in Australia. They're very interested in uranium offtake. So India now has the opportunity to come and do that as well. From our perspective, there is just one global market for uranium. Currently, the Canadians mostly supply India. Uh, there is no bigger market for us as a result of this. BHP Billiton owns the world's biggest uranium deposit at Olympic Dam. Outside and inside this week's annual general meeting, a raft of protesters voiced their concerns about the company's plans to expand the mine. But Chief Executive Marius Kloppers says neither that nor the 25% fall in the uranium price after the Fukushima incident has altered the company's plans. I think a little too early to, uh, to assess on Fukushima uh, exactly what'll, what will happen. The majority of our growth profile was uh, predicated more on Asian growth. Not clear to us that anything has changed there. We always had a fairly sanguine view of OECD growth. While Marius Kloppers is relaxed about the outlook, Australia faces aggressive competition from the world's biggest uranium exporters, Kazakhstan and Canada. A billion dollars is what we're actually exporting now. We would get perhaps 250, 300 million dollars worth of additional sales at current spot prices if we were to satisfy India's demand. So a useful increase, but nothing dramatic. We have the world's largest uranium endowment here in Australia. Uh, and if you compare our share of production uh, as a ratio uh, of our share of uh, the world's resources and then compare that to other countries, what you find is that we are punching well below our weight. The association is forecasting Australia's uranium exports could double by 2020. But Michael Angwin says the key to improving Australia's output is to come up with consistent laws across the states and Commonwealth and treat the industry fairly. I think we insist on being treated on merit. 
uh, in accordance with environmental law just the same as any other commodity is. And provided we're, we're treated in that way and no artificial bar barriers or impediments are put in our way, then I believe we are capable of realising the potential that we have as, as the world's premier supplier of uranium. While the Fukushima meltdown has seen nuclear stalwarts like Germany and Switzerland look at alternative power sources over the longer term, there are signs the uranium market might be returning to more normal conditions, with the Japanese government eager to power up its idle reactors. So once that um, Japanese reactor restart occurs, you'll start to see the, the supply-demand fundamentals change. And indeed, there isn't a, a, it's quite tight supply-demand at the moment. There was a major purchase by uh, a Japanese enterprise trading group last week, which put the spot price up 8% just in one purchase. But whether there's an appetite for Australian yellow cake might depend on emerging economies holding their nerve on nuclear power at a time when hostility in the developed world continues to simmer.